Number four, use valence bond theory to explain the bonding in F2, H2, and CLBR. Sketch the overlap of the atomic orbitals involved in the bonds. Okay, so there's three things that we got to do here. We have to just do the bonding of F2, H2, and CLBR. So I'm just going to split the screen up into three components. So we'll work with F2 on the left. We will do HF on the right. Just kidding. This is the middle. <laughs> and then CLBR. Okay. So in order to fully understand this question for valence bond theory, there's two things that we, we have to know, right? We have to know how to draw these in the Lewis structures. So that will be a quick overview. And we have to talk about, obviously, the valence electrons. So that comes from electron configuration. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out the Lewis structures for each of them. So keep in mind that fluorine is going to be bound together, right? F and F. And we could do the uh, valence bond, right? The, uh, the valence number of electrons, right? If I, just, if I just take F, right? F's electron configuration, if I look on the periodic table, technically would be, if I had to draw it out, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Now, if you don't understand where these are, there's a whole playlist on electro uh, configuration, electron configuration that we did. So you could always check out those playlists to find out how we got that. So in this case, remember that the last numbers are always the valence electrons. So that's why fluorine has seven valence electrons. And that's why, right, because two plus five, is seven. So that's why each fluorine has to have seven valence electrons. So one, two, maybe I'll just put this one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll move this fluorine a little bit over because now we're going to make the single bond and that's between one electron and one electron. Okay. So this is the Lewis structure for F2. Now, Let's do the Lewis structure for HF with its electron configuration. So I have hydrogen and I have fluorine. We already did fluorine's um, electron configuration. So I'll just write that again. 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And since the biggest big value has 2 plus 5, that's why you have seven valence electrons. So just kind of reiterating that. So once again, seven dots around fluorine. And then for hydrogen, hydrogen um, electron configuration is just 1s1. So the highest number, literally one, only has one electron. So that's why hydrogen has only one valence electron. Okay, I promise these electron configurations are going to make sense in a little bit. Or why are we why are we doing that? Because of the valence bond theory. But this is the uh, Lewis structure. Let's just quickly do CLBR, right? So I have chlorine. I got bromine, right? Yeah, CLBR. So let's just do chlorine and bromine valence electrons. In this case, I'm going to use the abbreviated version. So for chlorine, it's all of neon. This is great practice for you guys too. And then it'd be 3s2, 3p5. And just like fluorine, it's a halogen. The biggest number in this case, which is 3, has 2 plus 5. So you have 7 valence electrons. So 7 dots around the bromine. Just kidding, the chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then if I do the bromine, the abbreviated version, bromine would be argon. And then it would be 4s2. Now this one is a little tricky because it's 4s2, 
3d10, but then 4p5. We don't count the 3 for valence electrons because I have 4s here. The highest number is the valence electrons. And the same thing here. 2 plus 5 is 7 valence electrons. So maybe we'll do that in red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make that bond. And now we're ready to do valence bond theory. So what we're going to do when we talk about valence bond theory, just know that valence bond theory is talking about the overlap, the overlap of orbitals to form a bond. So instead of drawing this bond right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the overlap, right? But it's, it was pretty important to know how many bonds were in between the atoms that we were talking about. So in this case, in all three of them, we're only dealing with single bonds. Thank, thank goodness, right? So no double bonds here, no triple bonds. We don't have to sketch anything crazy like that. We just have to sketch the overlap of the atomic orbitals. So just the single bond for each. So now when we draw this bond, all the basically all the other electrons go away. So we're only going to be focusing on an, the fluorine and the fluorine. And we're going to treat them as, I guess we'll say, I guess we'll, we'll put like little dots here just to signify that this is the nucleus, right? The F in the middle is the nucleus. And maybe what I'll do actually is I'll draw the nucleus. That's probably better. And then I'll just say that this is a fluorine and this is a fluorine. Okay, so the thing here is that we have to find out which one of the orbitals are overlapping. And the, the thing comes from, the overlap is always coming from the unfilled orbital makes the bond. You have two valence orbitals. You have S and P. S's are always drawn as circles, and the P's are those dumbbells, right? So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking both P's because in the fluorine, the S's are filled, right? You can't have more than two electrons in an S, but remember the, the, the biggest number for a P is six electrons, but here I only have five. So we're going to be drawing P orbitals. Now the easiest P to draw is on the X axis. So here I go. I'll use my coloring. And the thing here is that it doesn't really matter what coloring you use, but the bond that you're actually going to make, that's the one that's going to be overlapping, right? And that was the one electron here. So boop, there's my one electron. And then if this fluorine is actually going to bind, it has to be the same color. That shows that it's constructive. And now you see how there's like an overlap. And maybe what I'll do is I will just outline this in black just to kind of get a better picture, right? Here's the outline of the green one. And then here's the outline of the other one. And you'll see that they overlap with this fluorine's one electron as well. So now there's two total electrons. But with the P, you have to draw it with dumbbells. So you just have to draw the other side having the orbital. And the other one on the other side is always less than the one that has the electron in it because there's no electron. So it doesn't have to be that big. And there you go. So this would be a P orbital from the fluorine making a single bond with the P orbital of fluorine. And this is what we're sketching. So now let's try it again. We already know that the fluorine, since the fluorine has the um, the last shell is a P that is not filled. That's why I have to draw a P. So here we go. We have fluorine here. And let's just say that this is hydrogen. And maybe, maybe I'll have to draw hydrogen maybe a little bit over here. So same thing for fluorine, right? Fluorine is going to have this big one over here because that's the one electron. And the little one farther in the back because that's not where the electron is. But the dumbbells have to be across the nucleus 
and that's one electron here. Let's just outline it just to show when we start um, when we start uh, overlapping. And now for a hydrogen, a hydrogen does not have an s. Sorry, it doesn't have a p orbital, right? It just has an s, and that's the one that's unfilled. So for hydrogen, I have to draw it as an s orbital. And just like we said earlier, s orbitals are circles. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just bring hydrogen out a little bit here, and I'll just make it as a circle. Hydrogen's pretty small, and there is the s orbital. Now as hydrogen comes in with its one electron, maybe I'll put the electron down here, I'm going to try to bind them. I hope they overlap. Let's see. There it goes. That's pretty good. I should have maybe drawn maybe the hydrogen a little bit more just, just to show you. Try to get that overlap good. But as you can see, the shape of S's and P orbitals are very different. So I'll have my one electron here from the hydrogen binding with the one electron from fluorine, and that's, that's better. And maybe I should have... I'm just going to get rid of this because it's a little bit too big. And I'll maybe just draw it here. That's good. Color this in. And now we can see the overlap because I'll draw the... There we go. And then it should be coming out here. Okay. And this is hydrogen with fluorine. The, the fluorine had the p orbital coming in with the hydrogen that had the s orbital and making that single bond, aka a sigma bond. Just know that any single bonds that you make are always a sigma bond. So a sigma bond can be made from two p orbitals, could be made from an s orbital and a p orbital. And now let's just do this one again. Now for chlorine and bromine, they had the same valence electrons, 3s2, 3p5, right? So that's seven, and seven valence electrons. Remember, we don't care about the three because that's not the highest value, and they're both unfilled in the p's. So it's going to kind of go back to the fluorine. But instead, we have chlorine and bromine, p, because that's unfilled, and a p orbital hill because that's unfilled, and let's see. We have our nuclei. Here's chlorines. Here's bromines. We always have to draw it bigger as they bind. So big and big. Woo. You see the overlap? Maybe I'll draw the two electrons now because one was coming from the chlorine, one was coming from the bromine. And then maybe I'll shade it in. And I'll outline it. So here's chlorine's orbital. What do you think, guys? Should I have, should I quit chemistry, and and just start uh, doing art? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> these go behind, and there you go. Made a single bond, and a single bond is always a sigma bond because if you notice, a sigma bond is always between. The, the base of the nuclei, right? You're actually forming that bond right in between those nuclei. That's the most strongest bond in covalent bonding. So this was between nuclei, or I tried to make it as close to, as, you know, as close to being as straight as, as the nuclei, and this was the closest as the nuclei as well. And there you go. That's the answer here. So sketch the overlap. There you guys go. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video and I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. It'll help, help them out too. We also have physics and math videos on the moment, so check it out. And thanks for being part of this community. I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.